I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. And I've got some more Logic Before Authority for you today. We are going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Super Bowl. You know, the big ritual they do uh, once a year. And uh, we're going to take a look at it for some specific reasons. And uh, a lot of reasons, but let me, uh, one of the first ones, okay? And that is, is that on the 12th of February, when, which is just a few days now, uh, when they have the Super Bowl, it will be the first time in history that they have had it on February the 12th. And you may think, well, what's so interesting about February the 12th, 212 or you could look at it that way. And the year of 2023. Okay. 2023. Drop the zero, 223. Or reverse that, 322. What does that mean? Right? Well, let me show you something here real quick. Okay. So you can see the date of, which is a little bit off the screen, but this is a two right here. Um. 2 12 23 to 12 31 2023. First off, we've already got 322 in the year, okay? It's just in reverse, which is exactly what how Satan and his minions do things. Typically, is they, they use the reverse or the mirror image of everything, like they are trying to use the mirror image of God in everything they do and Christ, right? So it being reversed is actually perfect. 322. Two. Now, you'll notice that it also is in the days. You see, you got 212, and it being the first time in history the F Super Bowl has been played on the 12th. And I have verified this. You can look it up. Just Google Super Bowl historical dates, and you'll find it right away. But uh, this is the first time it's ever been played on the 12th of February. And it happens to be the first time that that will make a perfect 322 days left in the year. So we have it in the year itself. Okay. But then we also have it in the number of days left in the year. 322, 322 days left. Or you can look at it as... 10 months and 19 days, which would be 9-11 in reverse, wouldn't it? Right here. 10 months and 19 days. And those of you on your uh, phones might can't see that. So let me show it to you real quick. Okay, so let me open up a little magnifier here. Okay. So you can see Sunday, February 12th, 2023. And that it is 322 days till the end of the year. 322 days from that date, from the start date to the end of the year. And it also is 10 months and 19 days or 9-11 in reverse. That by itself is a red flag, but there are other red flags including um, a... Somewhat little known prophecy in the Bible that refers directly to the Super Bowl and the things that go on and are going on and planned at this upcoming Super Bowl. And it talks about it specifically in the Bible. And I'm going to show that to you in this as well. Let me get rid of our magnifier. Okay. That also happens to be right down here, uh, 800, or excuse me, 88.22% of the year, okay, meaning the 322 days left in the year, okay, and so, let's see, let's come back over here to the first images I have up, y'all guys remember this movie, The 
the dark night rises. Who do you think the dark night is in Batman? That is the dark night, but it's supposedly the good guy. Now, who do these occultists believe is the good guy? The dark knight, the good dark knight. Well, you know who that is, okay? We're going to talk some more and show you some more things about that in a second. I want you to notice this imagery of, this is uh, some imagery that they put out uh, for this Super Bowl, as you can see. You know, it's got 57 there. Uh, and uh, 57 is interesting, an interesting number because it ties to an event that just happened the other day, which was the the white orb balloon that floated all the way across the United States and of all the country that it could have passed across the United States on and go out into the ocean, it decided to fly over my house or my place where I stayed. Isn't that quite interesting? And I I have learned the way God works is, is that uh, it is rather fantastic. And if he fly, flew that, or allowed that to take place, or however it took place, and it flew over my house, it's for me to pay attention to, absolutely, and to try to understand it. And what is it? Well, it is, they are symbolizing something, an orb. And what is an orb? What is? The, what are the orbs that people see in the skies? Most of you know the answers to that because you've been here on my channel for a long time. And you know that the orbs that people see and record and they think they're a UFO, well, I guess it is unidentified. But the high majority of these orbs that you see in the heavens are angels. And I have a documentary completely about that that you can go on BitChute and take a look at if you want to. This is the documentary here, just uh, starting out, and it goes through tons and tons of different locations where orbs have been seen and what they have been doing when they're seen. And some of the things that they are seen doing are extremely fantastic, like the flood, when the uh, flood hit, the tsunami hit Japan. There were orbs, you can see them, like right here where my mouse is at, going in and out of the water. And why were these orbs right here traveling in and out of the water? Anyways, what they are is they are, they are entities. They are angels, the angels. And how do I know this? Because the Bible says it in numerous places, including the book of Enoch. It says that they are bright white and round all about. And how else do I know? Well, because I have seen them myself in person within 50 yards of me, and sometimes even as close as uh, 20, 30 foot of me, these large, white, round, all about balls of light have come to me many times on the mountaintops and by the edge of the water, which is where they came to Daniel in the book of Daniel, as well as Moses and all the other times, normally it is beside the water at sunset or on the mountaintop at sunset. If you want to see angels, that's where you're going to need to go to have the best chance. And they also have to decide to come to you and illuminate themselves. Yes, I know we're getting off topic, but not really, because we're talking about the balloon, right? So what was the deal with the balloon? The balloon... Well, it was a bright white uh, object, b perfectly round, not like a normal balloon that they hang things under and send up. It was bright white and round all about, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And what happened to it? It fell from heaven. And how far did it fall from? Well, let me show you here. It fell from, if I can... Pull it up here. Let me grab it real quick. Okay, here we go. Let me show you how far it fell from. Well, looky there. The balloon 
was flying at an altitude of about 66,000 feet. Well, isn't that a quinkadink? That it just happened to be flying at an altitude of 66,000 feet. Well, he said, well, that was just one news agency that said that. Well, no, not really. Here's another one. Here's another report, again, saying 66,000 feet. And another one down here, 66,000 feet. And I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. If you watch the video, there was a very large spark, it looked like, of it falling when it was uh, struck or whatever they did. They could have just had a charge on it because they were, they, that are of one mind, were completely in charge of that event. Okay, let's go on back over here. Now, it's related to, like, this image Notice what they're choosing to use as the imagery f for the background, okay? The heavens spinning, okay? The heavens spinning, which are the hosts of heaven. Does the Bible not say that? Yes, indeed. Does the Bible not also say, even Jesus Christ said, that the, that the stars are angels? And they, he even said he had, what was it, seven? in his hand and they were the angels for the churches right for the seven churches i think it was so we have this imagery of them using again here's the sun rising with the imagery of their football the football right and notice that the football what it says on it it says the duke what are the Duke? What is the Duke? What is that reference to with all these big, giant, strong men playing? What is the reference to the Duke? Well, let me show you. Oh, oops. Uh, not those Dukes. These Dukes. Genesis thirty-six fifteen. These were the Dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Elphaz. The firstborn son of Esau, Duke Teman, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, Duke Kenaz. These were the dukes, the giants. Right? They even have football teams named after them. The New York Giants, you know, for instance. And why is that? Because it is related to to exactly what I have been covering in recent videos. It's quite amazing how that works out, isn't it? Indeed it is. All right, so let's go back over here once again and see where we're at here now. Now, y'all guys remember this? You remember what happened right prior to this movie being released? You know, this movie, The Dark Knight Rises. Do you remember after that all the things that happened? Do you remember the theater in Aurora, Colorado? Do you remember uh, this event? Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Uh, let's see if I can get a title here without having to say the word. Do you remember that event? And what they said happened there. And yet, I put out a video about it showing that these children, all dressed in khaki and white, which is Freemasonic colors, these are the children that was said to have uh, met their end at that event. But yet, here it is, they were at the Super Bowl singing at the halftime show. We're talking this child, this child, that child, that child, that child, and this child over here, and several more of them were the ones that they claimed had 
that were at that place that they met their end. I'm trying to avoid using certain words, obviously. Uh, that's one of the reasons that the Bible is written the way it is, is so that the the wicked cannot understand what is being said, but only the ones who are intended to be able to read and understand the Bible actually will be able to interpret it correctly. So therefore, there is no... Um, there's no sin in altering the text so that that way it can be heard by the right people and the wrong people, the wicked, will be confused. So, weirdest thing was about this event is that in kindergarten, when this event happened, they were about six years old. Yeah, six again. But two months later at the Super Bowl, all of a sudden they were all 12-year-olds. But it was the same children the same ones but all they did when the event happened was just show us photos so we know that event took place there we know um, the Aurora Colorado theater okay and let's take a look again at this this is in a scene from the movie Dark Knight Rises and it shows a football stadium that's destroyed. And at this moment in the movie, it shows the number 322. And what did we just discuss about the dates of this Super Bowl? First time in history. Let me show you. Let me go ahead and pull it up for you. And show you. Super Bowl. Historic. History dates. Okay, here we go. Take a look at this. So we're saying fit page not found. What? Let me go back. Try it again. What's the deal there? It shows it for a second and then it disappears. What's up with that? Let me just click directly on the link. See if that helps. See it appear for a second and then disappear? Huh. Okay, let me see if there's another link. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, still got the dates. Let's see if this one has it. Yeah. Okay, 115. So, Jan when they first started the Super Bowls, they were happening in January. January 15th, 14th, 12th, 11th, 17th, 16th, 14th, 13th, 12th, 18th. And then at some point, it switched over and jumped into February right here. Uh, in 2004, they had it for the first time on February the 1st. And then it was the 6th, the 5th, the 4th, the 3rd, the 1st, the 2nd, the 7th, the 6th, the 5th, the 3rd, the 2nd, the 1st, the 7th the 5th, the 4th, the 3rd, the 2nd, and the 7th, and the 13th. And now, the one this year is what? 322. February 12th. Indeed it is. <clears throat> so there you are now, you've seen it. Right? So now, let's go back over here. The symbolism shown throughout this scene is uh, on purpose. On purpose. And the fact that, for instance, in this movie, there is a scene where uh, Bane, starting with a B-A, right? Bane, Ba, um, he pointed to a map and said, I'm going to destroy Gotham. And when he did, he pointed to a map. And right on the map, it said, well, might as well just show you. Okay, here's the map. This was a map that was used in the movie Dark Knight Rises. It can be seen in the movie being used and was released where you could even order it. So what he, what he did was he pointed to this spot on the map with his finger and he said, and you can see what it says right here. 
S A N D Y and then the word hook. Okay? And he pointed to it and he said, I'm going to destroy Gotham. Right? And you can, and this is even the layout of the road basically that runs through there with a river not too far away. With here you have a stadium. Right? But they didn't destroy a stadium did they they did a they did a school but this very well may be a hint because that right there is a football stadium the football field in the middle with the bleachers and where everybody sits out around the sides that is a football stadium and unfortunately these people work in wicked ways and you can see their little diagram they drew was of a square with a circle around it, just like what you got right here, right? So they did that, and they got away with it, you know? But the fact that they're, that we still have yet to see a significant event other than the satanic rituals that take place at the stadiums, we have yet to still see a significant event. And I think that there's at least a good possibility that this Super Bowl will see an event and it will have something to do with the heavens. Something to do with something coming from above. And I'm going to take you and show you the scripture here in just a minute and prove to you what I'm talking about. Okay? I'm going to show you. When I did this video here disclosing this truth, the video got several million views in a very short period of time, matter of days, and then they terminated my channel. You know, one of those many. I did want to point out something I thought was interesting on here, which, all, like I said, they're wearing the khaki pants, okay? And they're wearing the white shirts. This is. If you go and look up what presidents look like when they're out in public, like at a golf course and other situations, they'll dress just like this and a lot of the people around them will wear the same thing. But what's interesting is, well, their, sh their shirt says, you know, uh, Sandra Hooker School with a couple of letters taken off. Okay. And... But it has a bird, like an eagle. Somebody would say, well, maybe it's a dove. No, it's not. It's it's diving. It has its claws down. And it has a pitched beak, just like an eagle. Who's playing at the uh, Super Bowl? Is it the Eagles? Oh, wait, it is. And the, uh, what is it, Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Redskins, kind of like, almost. Yeah, I just find that interesting because it is what it is, and it is tied into what I'm going to, what I'm going to be showing you here in uh, just a moment. We're going to go into and we're trying to find my spot. And I'm not really going to talk about. Well, this is the arm of Rihanna. Okay. Her hand holding up the pigskin, the duke ball, the football, the, yeah. And the interesting thing is, is how this is the football and how it had, and I remember the, and I'm sure you do too, about the uh, story of Esau and Jacob grabbing his heel. Yeah. Now, this is the video, a little short video, Rihanna is coming back right and you notice her name is Rihanna ha ha is the word the in Hebrew you notice in the videos I was noticing how Rebecca and how uh, Aber, Abram was changed to Abraham and Rebecca was changed and some other names were changed that included, it was adding the word ha, which again is the word the, which again is specific to saying like 
the one and only. Okay. And the word ha is also tied to Satan in the Bible as calling him the Satan. Even though you, it normally doesn't have it that way, but it is said that way a lot of times. So in this video, I want to show you a few things. I've got the audio off. Well, actually the audio, she, there's something said right about in here that actually is important, but uh, it says it, it's been um, 1,290 days, I think is what it says in here. I'll listen to it again here in a second. 1,190 days. And that strikes me because if you go to the book of Daniel and read that, which we'll take a look at here in a second, um, it talks about the days of how many days and 1,190 days is very close to the similar in a way to the number of days in the book of Daniel and I'll show you what I mean here in a second so let's go ahead and uh, watch this but not listen now look for a lightning flash she's coming across the gateway and the lightning flashes did you see that coming through the door through the gateway out of the dark into the night excuse me out of the dark into the light right so let's watch her again this is you can see completely dark you can't see her coming into the light and a lightning flash goes off see that lightning flash and watch this so profane it's almost impossible to even witness but it is what it is you see that see what she did she's casting a spell and another lightning bolt and this is tied directly to the Super Bowl because she's singing in it and what what do they call singers especially at an event like a Super Bowl what do they call them do you know what they're called they're called birds actually yeah birds Let's let that play on through. You see it happened again. She's casting a spell. This is a witch. You see her? And the lightning bolts. The lightning striking. Oh. See, now they're confirming what I just said. She is a deity. What is she in? She is in a... She is in the spotlight. She is inside of a circle. She is a deity. They are playing her as a deity, a witch. Okay. Or she's playing the role of a fallen angel, which is probably more accurate. Okay. But see the circle, the bubble, the balloon being white, having her in it, knowing what she's been doing this whole time. Uh-huh. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Shh. The whisperers. She knows what's going to happen. She knows something is up. and But she cannot say. But she already showed you, didn't she? She showed, she showed herself coming into the light or symbolizing something happening very likely at the Super Bowl she's dressed in a color that uh, is associated with Satan she's casting spells and you notice that she is covered in fur you know, like the uh, the Dukes, the hairy giants, even the ones that live in this world today, the people of the woods that most people haven't realized are real, and they are there, and they are the lineage, the bloodline 
of the fallen. There's no way around that, I don't think, at this point, although I'm open to all ideas. And no, I'm not saying every one of them are evil. I am saying they are lineage of the fallen. So let's keep going here. We'll watch it a little bit more. Yep. Here's your apple. Going back to the garden. You see it? The apple going back to the garden. Speaking of apples. In the garden. How about that apple? Those of you that are familiar with it. And what is she in? She is in a circle. You see her? She's in the circle. And... This is symbolism for the death of the queen and the dropping of the apple. Yep. And the creation and birth of something new. I could get way into this whole thing, of course. However, we're going to continue on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Uh, yeah, this is where I was talking about with Daniel in the number of days. 1,290 days. If we go back over here, oops, to this one, listen to it again. Oh, and I want you to notice too something. The word music. Okay? Music and the apple. Okay? That's going to come into play here in just a few minutes. And this bird singing at the Super Bowl. Yep, the bird. Let me prove that to you, too. All right. Let me see which one do I want to use. Let's use this screen. Okay, let's type in Super Bowl bird. Oh, wait a minute. I think I actually have... An article saved on that. Let's see, where's it at? I know I had it pulled up. Uh, here it is. Okay. We'll move this over here with that. Why the bird's voice in the flaming hot Super Bowl ad sounds familiar. The bird's voice. Okay, and it's talking about a female singing at Super Bowl or in a commercial for the Super Bowl or both. I'm not sure if she did or not, but uh, Megan the Stallion, the Style Lion, the Stallion. Yep, that was the bird, the reference to the bird singing. Yep, see. Even says, given at the end of the bird's song. And it's talking about a sound she makes, okay, when she does certain songs, I guess. I don't even know who this is. But, uh, yeah, bird. Okay, so now you kind of get that, why I brought that up, okay. So, let's see, where are we at? We are... We were right here and the reason I went back over here was to hear this one thing they say in the audio it's been 2,190 days 2,190 days yeah 2,190 days and in Daniel it's making reference to 1,290 days which is not exactly the same, obviously, and it also makes reference to a thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Okay, and obviously, it just caught my attention. I'm not sure what to think about the correlation there, but the correlation I'm getting ready to show you is quite, um, quite interesting. This green comet. 
keeps coming back in front of me for some reason that they keep talking about this green comet and the fact that it's in the neighborhood as they claim. Okay. Here's an advertisement for this Super Bowl. I wanted to point out that's all in gold. Everything's golden. Like the like a gold golden Super Bowl or something. And I wanted to point out this and the symbols that are on the side of this stadium. These symbols, this symbol right here is ancient Indian, not American, which American Indians used it too, but it originally was uh, from India, okay? And it's the symbol for a gateway, okay? It is a symbol, not the only symbol, but it is a symbol for a gateway, meaning between two dimensions or two places that symbol right there and it's on this side as well with the numbers 322 or 2023 in it however you want to look at it right yep okay now it's about time to jump over I think and see the Scripture, but I want to show you this before we do that too. This is a Budweiser song for the, uh, the Super Bowl, and it's, it says six degrees of Bud, right? So let's hear what they got to say in this, okay? I'm going to let it play a little bit. Budweiser, beer, the king is second to Who drinks Budweiser? It says, Who drinks Budweiser? You know the type. It says, You know the type. Gotcha. The people who grind it says the people who grind. Okay, and in this imagery, they're they're showing you the people who grind, making food. Biblically, grinding was the process of the people who made the food. They ground up the grain. They ground up the corn, that kind of thing. The people who grind. So I'm just leave that there, and we are going to now go to this. So if you're here to be entertained, it's actually just fixing to start getting good. If you're here to learn the truth, then you definitely don't want to go nowhere. All right, this is Ecclesiastics 12. I'm going to start at 1, and we're going to look at what it says here. And the things that are highlighted, how about that word grinder right there? How about the strong men shall bow themselves? What just happened a couple of weeks ago? Didn't some strong men get in a circle and bow themselves? Okay, well, let's don't get ahead of ourselves. Let's read. <clears throat> Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Meaning, when you're young, everything's great, everything's wonderful, there's nothing evil, it's, of course you're just not aware of it. But then when you get older, you say, I have no pleasure in these days as much as you used to, right? I know you can relate. Then it says, verse 2, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. So everything is still just great. Then it says, verse 3, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened. Now we already know what the grinders are, we know what these are and what it's making reference to, and I thought it was interesting, very interesting, that happens to be a whole commercial about the Super Bowl focused on the grinders. Who are the grinders, right? And here it is. And who are the strong men? Well, we know those are the dukes. 
right? And the doors, verse 4, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of a bird. At the voice of the bird. Huh? And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. And all the daughters of music. Remember the Apple music thing? Shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high. And fears shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall flourish. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. And desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home. And the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed. Or the golden bowl be broken. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Yes. So, we've got a lot of interesting things here, don't we? Afraid of that which is high? Who? Well, <laughs> it wouldn't take very much to fit this right into a Super Bowl, would it? It even calls out the golden bowl be broken. And what is the silver cord? And will we see something that symbolizes a silver cord be loosed? Or will we see something like a pitcher be being broken at the fountain? Or the wheel broken at the cistern? Are we going to see something in the heavens that will scare people above the Super Bowl? And it says, and the fears shall be in the way. Talks about the grasshopper shall be a burden. The only thing I'm not sure exactly, other than this almost sounds like the opening of a, the pit in a way. Well, and the football players actually come out of the pit. Uh, when they run on the field, it's called the pit. And just like in baseball, it's called the pit, where the people that are not uh, up to bat wait in the pit. Yeah. Well, so far as grasshoppers, um, well, they're having a, they're a burden in the West, in the United States right now. The grasshopper is a burden. The uh, Mormon grasshopper is causing major problems in the U.S. right now, whether you're aware of it or not, out west. They're coming in huge flocks and destroying crops all over the west. And the, and the, uh, the drought is pushing it further and further, making it happen. Okay. Uh, the almond tree, I'm not sure. Maybe, and y'all guys, like you always do, you can put, things that you think and that you see that I miss put it down below in the comments okay so it's going to be interesting to see what happens if anything other than a huge satanic ritual that takes place okay uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens at the Super Bowl I'm not saying something will but I'm saying we have precedence in scripture of something that could very well fit what's going on right now we've got the strong men do we not we have the grinders do we not and we have it it says and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and when did uh bane in the movie when did bane come out of the pit he walked up out of the pit onto the field or did he come? Yeah, he walked up out of the pit. Exactly. So, and when did he do it? He did it at the voice of the bird. They were singing the national the uh, national anthem or something like that in the movie. 
and he rose up out of the pit at the voice of the bird. Right? And then that event happened, and if it, something like that was to happen, the daughters of music shall be brought low. Especially if, if it's something that they're afraid of up in the sky above the stadium. And fear would strike all those people and cause a lot of people to get killed just by the flood, them trying to escape what they thought was real or may be real. If I close my eyes, guys, and I'm just going to talk to you for a second. If I close my eyes and I think of what I see, and it's like, you see, there's, they're, they're supposed to do a flyover. Maybe I can show it to you. They're supposed to do a flyover. Here we go. Flyover. They're supposed to do a flyover at the um, Super Bowl. And they're flying an F-35, I think is what it's called, over. The F-35 is a an airplane that's a stealth jet that can stand in one spot. It can hover and then take off and continue flying. And it can land vertical or horizontal. One of those crashed in December and they were the whole fleet was grounded. But they've got one of them flying over the Super Bowl. And guess what it's called, the name of the plane? It's called the Lightning. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Are they going to have one fly over the Super Bowl? Maybe hover above the opening above the stadium and have a malfunction and fall into the stadium? Because that's what happened 30 days ago. You can look up the video online and see it. And they were they're grounded. Even right now, from what I understand, they're still grounded. Yep. I do pray whatever goes on at the Super Bowl is just simply God's will. Because God works in ways that we don't understand and will never understand. Yet we seek the truth of his words and we seek the the truth of the world that we live in. And we seek to be closer to our Father in Heaven because the closer we get, I can witness that the more incredible, amazing things that happen in your life, the closer you get. I could tell you some stories about birds and all kinds of other things and even something that happened the other night that was right in front of my face happened and it was absolutely incredible and I will share that with you just I'm not going to get into it in depth in this video yep Ooh, 2023 NFL Super Bowl flyover promo oh we got to see that don't we let's see what we got here 16 seconds 16 <laughs> Let's get done with the commercial. So they have a promo for it. There it is. That's the jet. That's it right there. That's the one. It's called a lightning. Oh boy. Oh my God. Father in heaven, I don't know those people that are going to be in that Super Bowl, but I ask that you place your hand of protection upon your children that are there. Because there may be some of your children there that are there not by choice. Sometimes your parents make you go places that you don't want to go. And I know that you will protect your children. 
So I pray that your hand, and I ask that y'all guys pray that that Father's hand be in close protection upon his children that may be there with whatever happens, and hopefully nothing happens. And I pray that anything that does happen is your will, Father. Amen. So, um, yeah. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 uh, struggling with some things, uh, spiritual attacks and, and such have been pretty intense. People struggling with, uh, the dark side, trying to use them to hurt themselves and to hurt me. But Father has always protected me in this life, and and so I don't worry about that. I just uh, it, it it can be stressful, and it definitely does affect how much work I can get done. Um, I've tried to record this video a couple times, and it didn't work out. But uh, but it's here now, and I've gotten it done. The message is out. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to get this done today, and I'm going to try to upload this right now to y'all guys, and I'll put it as a premiere, and uh, I'll uh, tack on some time at the end, kind of like I did last time for a little bit of chat, closing time, and with that, I'll, I'll probably tack on 15 minutes, and uh, I love you guys, and our Father in Heaven loves you, and yes, we're exposed, and in this life, and we can be afraid, but I want you to know that there's nothing to be afraid of. And I'm saying this to myself as well. There's nothing to be afraid of. When you walk with Father and try to get closer and closer in understanding, you're protected. and uh, Nothing will happen to you. And I know this because it's been proven to me over and over in my life. If you're one of his children, nothing will happen to you. That is not God's will. Yes, we all have to one day. When time goes by and we get old. Yes, we all have to leave this world and be birthed into a new world. Or released from this time prison that we're in. And uh, so, don't worry. Be happy. And I'll see you next time here on Logic Before Authority.
Thank you.